Hi everybody, welcome back to Toning Up with Lindsay. Um, now I have told a few of you that today we're going to do chair-based exercises. So um, some excitement about that. I'm certainly uh, looking forward to sitting down some of the time and uh, I hope you're all gonna enjoy these exercises. I think Lindsay's idea, well, she'll tell you what her idea was, but uh, she wanted to make this program really inclusive. So this is for those of you who uh, would like to do some chair-based exercises. So I'm gonna hand over to Lindsay and she'll tell you all about what we're going to be doing. Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're well today. Uh, yes, as Tricia says, when we uh, first did the uh, sort of live video and lots of you were kind enough to write comments, uh, to say that uh, there was a demand for chair-based exercises, so not always exercises where you're standing up. So um, I've had it in my mind since we started to put something together for you. So this one is for you guys. The whole thing is seated. So all you need is a chair. Uh, you don't even have to use weights if you don't want to, but if you do, uh, a normal set of light dumbbells, no more than a kilo, I would say, or your substitute for that. So your tins or your water bottles or whatever you use uh, just to add that little bit of extra resistance. Uh, I'll also use a cushion later on in the workout. So we're gonna go straight into it. It's gonna be an all round body workout, but just using the chair for a little bit of extra support. So if you can sit tall, Tricia, please. So what we don't want is to be slumping back in the chair. So you want a nice straight back. With regard to the actual chair that you use, my recommendation would be to have a chair if you've got one that doesn't have the arms on the side because they'll get in the way with the movement. So try and have a chair like Tricia's, it's like a dining chair that's not got those arms on the side. So you're gonna sit nice and tall, Get the shoulders back and down and the chest open then please Tricia um, and let's start with your feet hip width apart as you normally would if you were standing and you want to think about your heels being directly underneath your knees as opposed to tucked back under the seat um, and think almost about pushing the heels into the floor so you're grounding your body and believe it or not by pushing the heels slightly into the floor you do get a bit of activation through the core um, so it's, it's a really good way to sit. So if you let your arms hang down by the side, please, and you're just going to circle your shoulders first up. So as we always do, we're warming up at the beginning and mobilizing the body. So preparing it for what we're gonna ask it to do during the workout. I definitely wouldn't go straight into a workout without doing this kind of a warm up, whether you're standing or seated. And then reverse your circle, Tricia. Beautiful, good, okay. And then you can swing your arms through. So if you have got the chair without the arms, you'll be able to do this quite easily. Obviously just take care that you don't whack your hand as you move through. Perfect, and then just hold your arms at chest height. And you're going to open and close them with the palms facing each other. Just open and close them. Yeah. Out and in. That's it. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears. And feeling the shoulder blades squeeze at the back. Good. Last time like this. Perfect. And then if you take them down by your side and you're going to side bend over. So similar to what we do when we're standing, um, but you're just going from one side to the other. There's actually a lot of good things about having a chair there. And in this situation, it's really good because it keeps your hips nice and square. And um, if you can keep the weight between the two sides of your body, then you'll get that nice bit of extra stretch through the waist area. Uh, and we're mobilizing the spine here as well. That's it, good. Okay, hold in the center. If you just um, rotate around, so you can have your hands up near your chest if you want, or however you're, most, however you're most comfortable really, but just get that rotation of the body. The head and shoulders go with it. So you're moving from the waist. 
What you're trying to do though is to keep nice and centered and keep nice and upright. So you're not leaning the whole body over to the side as you twist, you're just rotating around your waist area. That's it, good job. Okay, and then hold in the center. So if you can come up onto the balls of your feet, so like you're doing a calf raise and then lower. So lifting and lower, lowering through the feet. So you're getting a roll through the foot as you go. That's it. Good. And then you're going to point and flex one foot. If you want to take it out a little bit further to the front, you can do. So just point and flex, that's it, good. So all the way away as you, as you point. So open up at the front of the ankle, that's it. And then flex your toes as far back as they'll come and you'll feel that in the calf, feel the calf starting to warm up. And then circle around at the ankle. So do five circles one way and then reverse to go the other way. Perfect, good. Same thing the other side then. So we're pointing and flexing. And then five circles. You can make them as big as you want to make them. So you move in the joint through its whole range. And that's it, perfect. And then go back to the other leg and just stand it out straight and then fold it back in. So you're going from a straight leg to a bent position. That's it, good. So just working through the knees. And this whole warm up that we're doing, you can swap sides now, Tricia. You could do this if you were sitting in a chair for any length of period, uh, any length of time anyway it keeps the whole body moving, stops it stiffening up. So these are all useful moves for you to have, whether or not you're doing a sort of structured exercise session or not. Good, lovely. All right, so can you take a hold of your weights? I'm gonna split the workout into areas. So the first section will be about the upper body and then we'll move on to other things. So you're gonna start with your arms long at the side one weight in each hand, um, palms all face towards the front. So towards me, that's it. And then you're gonna go for a bicep curl. So squeeze and release. Just check your position as you go through as well to make sure that you've not slumped back into the chair, that you're sitting nice and tall. And then as always, when you're working with your resistance, even if you're not using weights, you want to make it slow and controlled so you're doing about 12, Tricia, as, as usual. So slow and controlled, move through the whole range. That's it. And imagine that, you know, you're creating extra resistance. So if you are using weights, imagine that they're heavier than they really are. And think about the muscle that you're actually trying to work. So in this case, it's the bicep. That must be about 12, is it? Yeah. Yeah, good, perfect. Okay, so I want to do it the same movement, but this time we're gonna do it with the palms facing each other. So you bending through the arm all the way up and all the way down. That's it. So slow and controlled. Feeling the bicep doing the work. We've got four more. I really squeeze the last one. Lovely, good. Okay, so let's go on and work the front of the shoulder. So you're gonna have the palms facing towards your window at the back, to the palm of the hand, so um, you face towards the back, and then you're gonna lift straight up to the front, straight arm to chest height, and then all the way back through, that's it. So watch what's going on with your shoulders as you do this movement. They need to stay away from the ears. So your shoulder blades are drawn down your back. 
same idea. So as you push up with the arms, you're thinking about pushing through something that's quite hard to push through. So you're creating that extra resistance as you go. That's good. Four more goes. Excellent. Lovely. Good. So we're going to carry on with the shoulder for the next one, um, but move it to the muscle over the top of the shoulder as opposed to the front. So this time you're going to go straight out to the side with the arms. So about shoulder height, no higher, and then all the way down again. So think about squeezing that muscle over the top of your shoulder to lift the arm. Almost imagine that your arms won't move unless you've squeezed into that muscle on the shoulder. And you're thinking length through the arm as you lift. That's perfect. Four more times. Three, lovely, last two. Good job, excellent, brilliant. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to work our triceps. So we've done the front of the arm, so we're going on to the back of the arm. So for this, you need to hinge your body weight forward. That's it. And then you need to take your elbows beyond your body at the back. Um, but don't allow them to stick out, keep them tucked in. That's good. And then from there, you're going to push the hands away to the back to a straight arm. Good. And then all the way back in. In terms of your head and neck position, keep looking down in the diagonal. So you don't want to strain your neck by trying to look up at the, at the screen. So if you're doing this at home, have a look at the technique to start off with and then make sure that you've got your chin tucked in and you're looking down so that you've got that nice alignment through the neck. Good. Now you want to keep your elbows as much as you can beyond the body, good. Um, you don't want the elbows to drop, you'll make it easier for yourself if you do, but also watch your shoulders don't tense. Do you want to do a couple of those just on the side, Tricia, just so that people can see? Because that position is quite an unusual one. So just a couple so we can see the angle. So you've got a straight back to hinge forward. Uh, if you just move your feet just out slightly so they're right under your knees, there you go. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Elbows are beyond body. They're tucked in as well. That's it. And the elbows don't move. They don't drop as you push the hands away. The palms are actually facing each other, so they're facing inwards. That's it, that's perfect, that's good enough. Thank you, good. Okay, so similar idea, similar position in terms of the body, you're gonna hinge forward again. This time you're gonna have the arms long and the palms will face towards the window at the back. So this time we're working the back. So we work in the area underneath your arms at the back. So you're going to push back with a straight arm all the way back and then all the way through, that's it. So as you move, draw your shoulders away from your ears, squeeze underneath the arms at the back, think length out through the hands. So this one's really good for that bit right underneath the arm at the back that can get a little bit, a, a bit flabby. Um, so it's, it's great for toning up that area. So 12 repetitions, just the same, nice and slow and controlled. So you're pushing towards the ceiling with your hands without forcing at all. Good, wonderful, okay. So let's go back to the front of our body and do the chest. So if you start with your hands at chest height, right in close to the body, palms down, and elbows will go out now to the side, and you're just going to push straight away to the front. So push to a straight arm at the front. Keep the arm, keep the hands at sort of shoulder height as you push away, and then draw it back in, that's it. Shoulders stay relaxed, and you push so you're squeezing through your chest, your pectoral muscles, as you push the weight away. 
palms face down to the floor. And that's it. So you're working on the same level with the arms all the way through, just from a bent arm to a straight arm. We are going back to the shoulder now and you're going to have your elbows into your waist, your arms bent with your palms up. Um, if you just, can you bring the hands down so they're level with your elbows? So you've got a 90 degree angle at the elbow, that's perfect. So from there, sit nice and tall, open the chest, shoulders down, and you're just going to pivot around your elbows, taking your hands out to the side. So you're opening the hands, that's it, and then closing them back up again. So feel how you, as you take your hands out to the side, your chest and your shoulders open at the front. And you can almost feel that sort of rotation towards the back with the shoulders. So this is working the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder area. And it's a really good one for posture and keeping the shoulder blades in the right position. Okay, so our last one for the arms, they're getting a good workout today, um, is actually for the shoulders. So you're going to start with your hands um, up near the shoulders with the palms facing towards me, ready to press overhead. If people have got particularly high blood pressure, I wouldn't recommend um, overhead work. So this is one that you should probably drop out of. There's enough choice for shoulder exercises and what we've just done. Um, you don't have to include this one. So you're just gonna press straight over your head to a straight arm, please. Same principle applies here. So even though you're pressing over your head, it doesn't mean that you have to lift your shoulder blades. So keep them anchored down as you work with the arms. That's good. So this one is probably one of the harder ones, I would say, because we're not used to doing a lot of overhead work. If your shoulders start to ache and your neck starts to tense, then that's the time to stop and you just build your strength up gradually. Good, lovely. So that's upper body sorted. How, how did that feel? Yeah, it felt like a good workout. Really good. So it's amazing that you can still get that workout, isn't it? When you're actually sitting down and, you know, you, on the one hand, you think, oh, it's going to be really, really easy, but it can be as easy or as hard as you want to make it. That's good. Hmm, cool. All right. So I thought we might do some cardio in the chair next. So this will be a fun one. The, um, you can... You don't really need your weights for most of it. You can take them for, to make it a bit more difficult if you want to. So first one I want you to do is a knee lift. Check your position before you start. So sit tall, lightly draw in the tummy. And I want you to just lift one knee and then the other towards your chest. So it's like you're marching, that's it. Now, if you want to make it a bit harder for yourself, you can add the arms. So like your, you know, like a walk, you can push it. That's it. That's a yeah, coordination challenge with that one. There you go. Excellent. Good. Perfect. And then as you get the hang of it, if you want to, you can speed it up. So we're trying to exactly brilliant. Fab. So you want, to, you want to try and get the heart rate up with these kind of exercises. So it's up to you to control how fast you go in order to have that happen. Obviously, it gets too much. You just slow it down again. Good. I've not brought my timer in today, but I'd probably do a similar thing to what we did the other week. So around about 40 seconds of each one of these and then just take a little rest. Good, perfect. All right, so let's go a little bit faster, but we'll drop the arms for the minute. So what you're gonna do is like a double time, but on the spot. So you just 
like a, like you would do if you were going double time that's it yeah so you can really get this one moving You're not lifting the knees very high Good, lovely. All right, let's progress that one a little bit then and go out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. So you're keeping out, out, in, in. So start from the set, uh, one by one though. So start from the center and then go out with one foot. So slow it down, out with the other, in, in, out, out, in, in. There you go, fab. Brilliant. It's amazing. I was doing some of these the other day when I was planning the session. It's amazing how some of these do actually still get your heart rate up quite nicely. And also, these are really good because you've got to think about it. So it brings that the, the sort of mind body connection in the brain's got to work a little bit to get the coordination. Good, beautiful and rest. Lovely. Yeah, have a drink. Good job. All right, so for the next one, we're gonna go back to the uh, lifting up of the knees, alternate knees, but at the same time, you're going to punch to the front with the opposite hand. So a little bit like the chest press that we just did. So it'll be opposite hand presses away. Yeah, there you go. Good. And if you wanted to make this even more difficult, you could take your weights in your hand and you could press away with those to so start with them by your chest and then press away opposite arm to leg. Yeah. And again, it's, it's quite interesting how just that little bit of extra weight can really add to the level of difficulty. Good. We keep it moving. You're going four more, three, two, and one and rest. Good, perfect. All right, so let's do um, some punching. Again, with or without weights, it's your choice. So your first one is to punch across the body. That's it, so one side to the other. So keep it smooth, but keep it strong. That's it. So you can see that um, we're twisting from the waist here again. I'll do something similar for the tummy exercises in a little while, but with this one, I'm really just trying to get the heart rate up to get a little bit of cardiovascular response. And you can go as fast or as slow as you want with or without weights, make it work for you. Good. Keep going. Last six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work, excellent. Okay, so the last one of our cardios is to punch up. So you're punching up on the diagonal. So it's like you, I think they call this an uppercut. So you come under and up, yes. Make sure you keep hold of your weights. You don't want them flying out of your hand, <laughs> a bit dangerous. Good, very nice indeed. So these punches, this time to take your frustration out. It's a time when you can really get rid of all that energy, get rid of all that frustration. That's it. So as I say, about 40 seconds if you've got a timer to hand on each of these, it's not critical. Have a little break in between each one and then come back onto the next one. Good. Let's go for four more. <laughs> Three two and one lovely okay so how would you how would you rate your um exertion levels would you say if you were rating them out of 10 one out, um from one to 10 with 10 being the hardest probably about five or six i mean i'm definitely getting slightly out of breath and i can feel my heart rate going up 
good brilliant so that's exactly what we want so we don't want anything too dramatic um, but we, we want to feel like the heart and lungs are having to work a little bit harder so in an ideal world I'd say aim for about a six out of ten and what it takes to get each person to a six out of ten will be different for everybody so just find the the way that's right for you um, and I didn't say earlier but with each of these sections if you want to you can go back over them you can go twice around um, and, and that would make it more difficult again Good, all right, so our next one is lower body. If you can pop the weights down, please, Tricia. Uh, we'll start with the thigh area, so the quadricep, exactly where your hands are at the moment. Um, we're not using a band today, but if you've got an, um, uh, not an elastic band, an exercise band, you know, the stretchy ones, or you could even use a pair of tights, you can actually wrap that around the leg of the chair and then around the, your ankle. So it would just sit around the front of your leg in a loop. Uh, so you'd tie it together um, and have one bit of a loop underneath the chair leg and one bit around your ankle. Um, from there, you are just going to extend the leg straight. So we did the movement in the warm up. That's it. So imagine if you had um, a band tied around, keep going on the same leg, please. If you had a band tied around, it's gonna make it much harder. If you have um, little ankle weights or anything like that, you could put them around your ankle and that would make it harder as well. But otherwise just create your own resistance. So when you send your foot out to the front then really squeeze underneath where Trisha's hands are now. So squeeze your thighs to make that movement happen. So really control it and push out with the foot. Good. So we're doing 12 each side. You done 12 on the other side? Definitely. <laughs> if not more. <laughs> So you're not using any weight at all, obviously, Tricia, but um, can you feel your thighs doing some work? Absolutely. Yeah, good. That's 12. Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay. Right. So for the next one, we're going to do a from sitting position to standing. So sit to stand. We want to think about the technique here. So you want your feet hit width apart. You might want to sit slightly further forward on your chair it's entirely up to you um, you want to think about lightly drawing in your tummy and then pushing the heels into the floor so your heels should be directly underneath your knees pushing them into the floor to come to a stand that's it and then sit back down good so push the heels to so try not to use the momentum or you know, pushing your hands into the chair, which is very easy to do without even realise that you're doing it. So really use your legs, push and squeeze your bottom. That's it, good. And try and think about going straight up to the ceiling. So not too much rocking forward and back. And if you wanted to make this harder, then you could go down so that you were almost on the chair, but not quite. That's it, so 12 reps. Good, I think you've done quite a few now, haven't you? Yeah, far too many. <laughs> um, okay, let's take a rest then, have a little seat again. Good. So that's a good one for all the major muscles of the legs and also the bottom. I appreciate those people that um, can't get up and down out of a chair very easily like that. That might be one to work towards, um, but it's certainly a very effective exercise. And it just gives you a little bit more control over it, knowing that the chair is right behind you rather than doing the freestanding squats. Good, okay, so we're going to work the in a thigh next and for that you're going to need a cushion please in fact you might need two cushions let's have a look um, so what I want is um, the cushions to 
um, for your knees to be hip width apart, but you can hold your cushions. And the feet are going to be flat on the floor, heels directly underneath the knees as always. So what you're going to do from here is you're going to squeeze those cushions together. So you bring your knees as close together as you possibly can and then release them off to hit width apart again. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is when you bring your knees back to hit width apart, you don't want to drop your cushion. That's the point. That's it. So as you squeeze, you should feel something happening in the inner thigh. Is something happening in the inner thigh? Something sure is happening in the inner thigh. Excellent. Let's have the feet flat on the floor. <laughs> That's it. And to make this one more challenging, what you would do is you would squeeze and hold. So squeeze and hold and squeeze as hard as you can and then release again. Squeeze and hold and release. That's good. Good. Perfect, excellent, lovely. So we've done the inner thigh. I want to do the outer thigh now. So if you can put your hands on the outside of your thighs, just above your knees. Yeah, there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that as resistance. So it's actually quite an, a good upper body exercise as well. So you're going to try and not allow your knees to come apart. All right. So resist with your hands and push your knees out to the side. That's it. So you can start with your feet and your knees together and then allow them to open a little bit, but give them as much resistance as you can. So just the knees open and close. Yeah, good. So you're trying to stop the knees opening um, with your hands. And in so doing, you should be able to feel it in the outer thigh. If you do have an exercise band that I mentioned earlier on, you could also do this by wrapping the band around your thighs and then just holding the two ends together and then working with the band. So you pushing out into the band and then releasing off, that would do the same job. Are you getting um, a response from that, Tricia? Yes, Lindsay, I oh, yeah. am. <laughs> Always like to check. <laughs> Good. Good, lovely, brilliant. All right. Um, so for our last lower body exercise, we're going to work the calves. So you can use your weights again for this if you want to. You don't have to. And you're going to just put them on, on the top of your knees and just steady them there. So we'll start with both feet together and you're going to have them heat. So when I say together, sorry, what I meant was we're going to work with both of them rather than single legs and you're going to have them hit with the part. That's it. So the weight is going to weigh the legs down and you're going to calf raise with both feet. So you're lifting the heels off the floor and then lowering. Yeah. And you can also apply some extra resistance with your hands. So just like you did with the last one, you're resisting the legs, same kind of principle, push down and prevent the legs from lifting up. So you should feel this in your calves. Good, okay. And then let's do a few where we just work in one leg at a time. So if you want, you can transfer both weights onto that leg and then do the same thing. So you're lifting the heel up as much as you can lift it and then lowering it down. Can you feel that in the calf? Yeah. yeah. And then let's do a few on the other side just to even them up. If you're doing this at home, about 12 again, each side. So keep resisting against the leg. Good. 
Good. Lovely. All right, so the weights can go down, please. And we're going to finish off with some core, some tummy exercises. So if you have your hand behind your ears, just lightly holding them there. If people don't like that position, then you can always cross over your hands across your chest. So you're simply going to lightly draw in the tummy and then bring the body forward towards your thighs. So it says forward, and then you come all the way back to a completely straight position, that's it. So out breath to come forward, in breath to go back up. That's it, and you're sitting completely straight at the top. So this is like a, a crunch that you might do on the floor. So we work in that main muscle down through the center of the tummy. That's it. Good. So out breath and crunch. In breath to come back to the top. Good. Is that 12? 10. Oh, very honest of you. Must be too easy. <laughs> um, good, perfect. All right, so let's move on to the waist then. Um, your choice again with your hands, either way you've just had them or across your chest. Um, and this is similar to what we did in the warm up, but I want you to really think about the twisting around. So you'll twist around, head and shoulders go with, and then imagine that your opposite side of the waist, if you twist over your right shoulder, oh, okay, left, that's fine, left's fine. So then your right waist will squeeze to bring your body back to the center. That's it. Um, and then Good. So try and sit tall with it. So don't lean over as you twist. Um, and you don't even have to move quickly, just as long as you're accessing that muscle in your waist. If you did want to hold some weights while you were doing this, that would add to the difficulty. You're trying to twist around as far as you're able to without forcing it. Good. That's it. And then you're going to do the same thing the other side. So stay centered with the weight. So the, um, the weight is evenly distributed through the two sides of your bottom. And you're sitting as tall and as upright as you can. And then you twist from there. Create your own resistance on the way back. So squeeze your, in this case, Trisha's left side of her waist will be squeezing to bring the body back round to the front. Good, lovely. All right. So for the next one, we've got two more tummy exercises. Um, you need to take your weights, please. Option is to have one in each hand, or if you want to make it harder for yourself, then you put two in one hand, entirely up to you. We're gonna have the arms loose by your side with the palms facing into the chair, that's it. Um, you're gonna sit nice and tall, and then you're going to bend over to the side um, on the in-breath. On the out-breath, you squeeze the opposite side of the waist to come back to the upright position, that's it. So you reach with a straight back so you're definitely not slumping and curving through the back as you do this you're sitting nice and tall you imagine the weight is heavier than it really is and that opposite side of the waist has got to squeeze to come back to the center that's good Lovely. And then the same thing the other side. As you're doing these, think about lengthening out of the top of the head. So it's almost like you're growing tall before you go over to the side. 
So definitely don't kind of collapse down into the side bend. Think length and then squeeze the opposite side of your waist to bring you back to the center. Good. That's it. Brilliant, well done, lovely. Okay, let's do our last one. Um, so just like I put a slightly more difficult one on the end of the other sections, this is a slightly more difficult one. And so if you are not able to get up and down easily out of the chair, this is probably not one for you, just drop it off. So can you put the chair up against the wall then it's nice and secure, please. So you want your hands, if the chair allows, about shoulder width apart. You're going to draw your shoulder away from your ears. You're going to walk your feet away from the chair such that you drop your bottom. So drop your bottom down. That's it. Yeah, lovely. So that's lovely. That's a perfect position. So shoulders are away from the ears. Nice flat back at the top. And you draw your tummy in towards your back and you hold it. So this is like a, um, a plank, really. So you should feel it work in your tummy. And... Also, you probably feel it in the upper body as well. So you, you should still be able to breathe even if you've got your tummy drawn up towards your back. And you just hold it for as long as you're able to hold it. The important thing is that you've not lifted the bottom, number one, or number two, you've not um, sort of pulled away. So you can see that Trisha's body weight is over her hands. And um, if she was to pull away and open up the shoulder joint, her body weight wouldn't be right over the hand. And not only would it make it easier, but it would make it harder on the shoulder joint as well, which we don't want. So we've got the hands directly underneath the shoulders. And we're scooping the tummy. Good. Perfect. So that was your grand finale on the core. It's good. OK, so if you can put one leg straight out to the front um, and rest on your heel, so flex the foot, that's it. You might need to come slightly towards the front of your chair. Do take care uh, if you're using chairs at home that they don't tip. So just get yourself in a place where you feel really secure. Take a breath in with a straight back and then on the out breath, you're going to bring your chest towards that thigh. Um, and if you've got your foot flexed, you're going to feel a stretch in the calf, but also in the hamstring in the upper part of the leg at the back. And then you just breathe through, holding for about 10 to 15 seconds each stretch. The more you flex your foot up, the more you'll feel it in the calf. That's it. So breath in and then out breath to bring the chest towards the thigh. Flex in the foot and breathe. So this is the time to enjoy the stretch. Done all the hard work. So take your time with these stretches and just enjoy that few minutes of connecting with your body really. Good, lovely, okay. So uh, we need to stretch the front of the thigh, but we'll do, do it again sitting down. So you need to shift the weight to the side of the chair this time, and then tuck the outside leg to the back. That's it, that's it. Um, can you shift just a little bit further to your right, Trisha? There you go, all right. So um, send your foot out to the back, sit nice and tall, and then I want you to tuck your bottom under. So it's a small movement, just tilting the pelvis under. And as you tilt it under, you should feel a stretch go on the front of your thigh. So in this case, it'd be Trisha's right thigh where she should feel the stretch. And then, yeah, just take care that you're nice and secure. So you're not leaning back, you're sitting up nice and straight and it's just that little subtle tilt of the pelvis that will give you the stretch. And then let's swap sides. that's it so the the knee so in this case the left knee you want to drop that right down to the floor so you're getting the length through the front of the thigh and then a little tuck under the pelvis will give you the stretch that you need that's 
that's it, perfect. And then you can come back to the center of the chair, take one hand over the top and take a hold of the elbow with the other hand for a tricep stretch. That's it. Now, depending on your shoulder flexibility will depend on where you can get that elbow to. So don't force it right back, just take it to where it's comfortable for you, but then use the other hand to just ease it a little bit further and you should feel a stretch down the back of the arm. Good, and then the other side. Lovely, and then release that off. Could you just turn the chair to the side for a second, please? You're gonna clasp your hands at the front. Take a breath in and then send them away. So that's it, palms go away, chin goes on the chest. This time you can round through the back and you're trying to separate your shoulder blades and you'll get a nice stretch across the back. So scoop the tummy. You can even slightly tuck your bottom under to get a little pelvic tilt. So it gives you a really nice stretch through the whole back. Good, and then release that off, sit tall again, clasp your hands behind. That's it, and then move them away from your body. So you're lifting the hands away, keeping the shoulders down and away from the ears. Keep breathing. Perfect. And then release that one off. And then just uh, last couple, if you can turn the chair to face the front for me. So you're going to leave one hand on the side of the chair. So you supported on the, on the seat of the chair, sorry, at the side, yeah. And then take the other hand up and over the top, in breath and out breath to go over. That's it, trying to keep the weight evenly between the two sides of your bottom. Um, if you can straighten the arm up to the ceiling and lengthen, that's it, yeah. Good, lengthen and stretch. You should feel this in the waist. And then swap sides, breathing in and breathing out. So we're still keeping the body in a nice straight line. We're not twisting forward, trying to get into the waist. Lovely. And then we'll finish with a uh, waist stretch. So you're going to take a breath in. On the out breath, you're gonna to twist towards the back. If you want to now grab the back of the chair, if you can reach it. Um, and twist around. Try not to shift your weight though, Tricia. So keep that, keep the hips facing forward. That's it. And then go round from there. So you'd be using your left hand to grab the chair if it will, if you can reach it. And that helps just to draw you around a little bit further. Good. And then we do the same thing the other side. So we're nice and centered. The hips stay square facing towards the front. And then you twist using the waist and feel the stretch in the mid back and the waist area and breathe. Beautiful. And then to come back to the front, to give your shoulders a circle. And the other way. and then swing them through with a few deep breaths. Last time. Perfect, well done. Good job. Lindsay, thank you very much. I enjoyed that, it was good. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna do another sort of total body workout again next week, I think. Yes, yeah. All right, so thank you very much. I should look forward to that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you're joining in as well and I hope you're finding it beneficial as always. And uh, thanks a lot to all of you and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.